Hey guys, this is Simon Sage from Into Mobile. We're checking out the Sony Ericsson Xperia Ray. It is coming soon to TELUS and is available unlocked uh, in the US right now. It's kind of a, almost a, a, an upper level smartphone. Uh, I, I'm still gonna put it in the mid tier. It's got a 3.3 inch wide VGA display. Uh, that's a 854 by 480. Uh, it's got a one gigahertz processor, 512 megabytes of RAM, and a very nice 8 megapixel camera on the back there with LED flash. Uh, design wise, it's very slim, very sharp. Uh, we've got kind of a, a trapezoid shape going on there. I guess that's a rhombus, nice kind of angled top and bottom. Got a volume rocker on that side. We got a uh, micro USB slot over here. Uh, apparently, it can be used as a USB host as well, which means you get the plug in peripherals as you will. Um, on the front side here, we've got some capacitive keys, also a front-facing uh, uh, camera for video calling. Um, and also, just slightly above the home button here, that's actually a, an LED indicator, so it's very seamlessly integrated in there. Sony Ericsson has uh, included a few customizations here. Their last update actually included a lot of Facebook integration. So there's a few really simple, interesting ways that, that it does that. Uh, for example, when you're just moving around home screen icons here, uh, there's a new bar that pops up on the top that says share. So if I drag it all the way up here, it'll uh, turn it into a Facebook post so I can share my Foursquare app to Facebook so other people can download it. Or if I want to share it off to somewhere else, if I just want to email it to someone, you've got options there for that too. Another really interesting place where they've included Facebook integration is in the FM radio app. Um, I actually got to plug in the, the headphones here uh, in order to use it as the FM antenna. But once it's plugged in, we've got, there we go. So uh, you'll, you'll notice in the top right there, we've got a familiar looking thumbs up icon. When we hit that, it actually records the song that's currently playing and sends it off to Grace Note for music ID. Now often I, 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 I can't find a clip or if there's a commercial or something, I can't figure it out. Uh, try another station here. There we go. So it figured out the song I was playing and uh, it shares off to Facebook really easily. Um, that, that's pretty cool too. I mean, like I, I, I don't really use a lot of phones that still have FM tuners included in them. Usually, that's kind of a feature phone thing. So it's a, it, it was a nice addition. Um, but the, the the headphone here, actually, I I found that only the stock headphones have been working with this thing. Um, if I try plugging in any other set of headphones that have an inline mic, uh, it'll say accessory not supported. And I've tried that on three different sets and uh, still no dice. So that's a, that's a bit of a pain, especially if you use your phone for, for music often and you've, you've got your own set of, uh, of headphones uh, that you really like. Um, but TELUS included an audio preload on here, which is excellent. I've been using audio for the last couple of months and uh, it, it, it includes uh, on-demand streaming, you get to build a collection, and whatever you're listening to is shot out to the live feed on Facebook. So uh, very sociable, uh, really good library too. So uh, I, I've actually found a couple of new artists just just by seeing what uh, what, what some of my other friends are listening to. So it's uh, it's really great. It costs ten bucks a month, mind you, but uh, I, I find it's 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 generally worth it. Um, we can go into the overview here. I find that that their new overview thing here is uh, is a little less interesting than it used to be. The, the, the widgets just kind of float around here. Uh, it, it used to be it was a much more kind of controlled uh, uh, kind of collection based on, on uh, how many widgets are on each home screen. The 8 megapixel camera includes uh, 3D in it, which is really just a, a fancy way of saying panorama. So uh, it's, it's really simple. You just tap the viewfinder and then pan from left to right. Now, you have to do this slowly or else they'll get angry at you here. So, just go there, pan from left to right, and so on, and eventually it just automatically stitches them all together. 
it's uh, I, I I found it's actually pretty good for for a couple of shots uh, if you could just set set the right pace for for painting. There are a few simple customizations here that Sony Ericsson has added that I'm a big fan of. Just kind of simple, useful things. Uh, one here is. Uh, a shortcut for capturing home screens. Obviously, as a reviewer, I, I've, I've got to take a lot of these, and traditionally, you, you, you've had to either root the phone or uh, figure figure out the uh, the uh, developer kit. And even then, sometimes it's, it's a bit of a crapshoot. I, I I tried taking screenshots on the Sony Tablet S, and it was complete lost cause on the. Uh, uh, through, through the uh, native development kit, but right here there's just simple take screenshot button here and it's saved to your gallery. It is super super handy. Samsung has started doing that too. I think if you hold down the back button and then hit power uh, that'll also take a screenshot, but if you if you hit power for too long then it'll actually just put it in a standby. So, so far Sony Ericsson has the best implementation of that feature I, I've seen to date on Android. Um, iPhone has it too, where you hold down the home key and then hit the power. Um, Another really useful thing that I've seen here is power save mode. When you hit 20%, um, this will automatically pop up and you can activate power save mode and it'll just deactivate all the antennas, drop down the screen brightness. Uh, super, super helpful. I mean, it, it, it's stuff that, uh, that you, you, you would end up doing anyway. Um, jump into settings here and uh, see what kind of stuff it'll turn on or off. If, if there's something that you, you really want to keep even when you're in power save mode, you, you could change it there. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of that feature. Uh, it's, it's also a recent addition. It's also DLNA support in here. It's, a, it, it's pretty standard where you just shoot off music and video uh, from the phone out to your home TV or stereo system if they're all hooked up to the Wi-Fi network and support the standard. Um, there's also mobile hotspot on here. Always handy if you've got other mobile devices like a tablet say. Um, one new thing that Sony Ericsson is doing here are uh, new icons here for finding games and apps which I find is kind of interesting here. Again this is part of the the, the Facebook integration where uh, it will scan my Facebook profile to find what kind of apps my friends have been sharing and show them all here and provide direct links to, to download each one. It's, uh, it's an interesting idea and uh, um, yeah I just Let's see what happens here. It launches right into the Android market. The Android market has a ton of applications here too. Sony Ericsson has a, has a bunch of their own custom ones too, especially for Timescape actually. That's, that's a really uh, big customization that Sony Ericsson has had for a while, um, ever since the, uh, the X10 actually. You can see the widget over here. So that this basically ties in all of your social network activity, uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, but there are also a lot of plugins available. Uh, for example, Foursquare, you can download, uh, you can download a, a plugin so that your Foursquare friends check-ins show up here as well. Um, there, there's a whole library of them too, and I find it's the user interface is really smooth. Uh, it's, it's just a really nice way to casually pan through updates from friends. Um, Twitter, when, when, when you click in on, on these, it launches into the mobile website, which isn't exactly ideal. I mean, uh, or, uh, ideally you like it launching into the native app, but some people have uh, different uh, mobile Twitter clients, so uh, to each their own, the, the, uh, the, the mobile website is actually still pretty, pretty solid here. Uh, so uh, here, l let me show you what other plugins you can get here. Uh, go to settings here and set up services and extension search. And um, you've got, uh, you, you could even plug your, your whole Gmail into there if you want, uh, if you're more prone to just reading rather than having to send a lot of replies back and forth. Uh, they've got, uh, I, th I think they have a Picasa timescape, so you can see pictures from the, uh, the web service there coming in. You got a Flickr timescape, RSS feeds, NFL even. Lots of, uh, of, of timescape widgets now, which is, which is really, really cool. Um, Another little custom plugin area that uh, Sony Ericsson has here is called Liveware. Uh, this is kind of uh, a hub for smart accessories. So I, I mentioned the USB host there, and that, that ties in here too. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of, of other uh, devices that, that support this yet, so uh, it's, it's not hugely uh, popular just yet, but uh, still a, a, an interesting stab at, uh, at kind of making that a more prominent thing in smartphones. Um, what else have we got here? 
we've got, uh, oh yeah, there's the uh, Video Unlimited. There we go, this is uh, Sony's video music service. Let me skip that, okay. Uh, this basically lets you uh, buy and rent movies to watch on your phone. Now the screen here is reasonably sharp, but uh, it is it is kind of small, 3.3 inches. This isn't a monster giant touch screen phone that, that you might see from Samsung or HTC. So it's, uh, I probably wouldn't be too interested in watching the whole show on here, but in uh, in landscape mode, it, it's actually all right. We can pull up, let's say, a, a video here on, from the YouTube app. I can also show you guys uh, the Bravia engine. Uh, Sony, uh, that's, that's Sony's TV. Uh, brand and they uh, they have an option here to have uh, images and videos really pop. Uh, I, I mean, I, I I find the difference kind of negligible here, but we can watch this in the landscape. That's kind of a low quality video, but. So that's just on kind of regular mode. You can see what happens if we flip on the Bravia engine here. Settings, display, and we can turn off Bravia. Back into YouTube. I can't really tell a big difference. If you can, more power to you. Um, so anyway, that is the Sony Ericsson Xperia Ray in a nutshell. Uh, I, I found that it feels really good in the hand. There's this kind of, the, the, uh, the bezeling on the side here, it feels like stainless steel. So it's a very tight, dense package. Uh, and uh, it's it, it feels good, it's smooth, it's responsive. Uh, no keyboard, but there is a, there's a gesture-based keyboard, which I find really helps out a lot. Uh, I actually didn't find this out until recently because, I mean, swipe tends to, to really take the, uh, the the branding there, and there's no indication that this is anything other than a, than a, a stock Android um, keyboard. So it was, it was definitely a welcome surprise. Anyway, feel free to swing by intomobile.com for our full review of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Ray.